Whoa, whoa. See this guy right here? Looks like he's hit rock bottom. Well, this guy's actually me, believe it or not. I, I, I mean, it's completely believable, but that's besides the point. Now, I bet you're wondering how I got in this wacky situation. It all started in the summer of 86, when I started to learn how to play Rainbow Six Siege. But the only way to truly understand what happened is to take it way back, to the beginning, to where it all started for all of us. I'm going to teach you guys how to actually play Rainbow Six Siege, because I'm clearly experienced enough to do so, given the last clip. Now I know that 99% of my content is showing you what not to do in Siege, but Ubisoft has kindly sponsored this video for me to show you how to actually play Siege. Like, 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 like that's why there's the emphasis in the title. It's the perfect time for this video as there's gonna be a sick free play event from August 16th through the 19th, and during that time, the game is gonna be discounted. So it's never been a better time to check out some Rainbow Six Siege. More at the end of the video, but we're about to delve into a very complicated game. Okay, so let's figure out what the hell is going on together. Dude, what even is Siege? In a nutshell, Rainbow Six Siege is a 5 vs 5 competitive first person shooter with rounds and no respawns. It's a very in-depth game that rewards outside of the box thinking, and the playable characters called Operators are a big part of why the game is so dummy replayable. So let's talk about them. In Rainbow Six Siege, right now, there are 40 operators. They're separated into attackers and defenders. Attackers attack and defenders defend. It, it kind of explains itself. I'll go into a little bit more detail of how they actually work against each other and what their actual job is a bit later in the video. Each operator has their own ability, which can either benefit themselves or the team directly. These abilities are tailored to each operator's playstyle, and when used correctly, can turn the tides of a round. you don't die. I have faith. Make it dead. Make it dead. Good play. Got it. You got 15, 15 seconds. Just grab that bitch. One on four remaining. Got it. Yep. Grab that Five. shit. Go. Go. Oh, oh, you're a legend. Each operator also has a set armor and speed rating. More armor equals harder to kill but slower, and more speed equals easier to kill but faster. As a note, if you see that an operator's a 3 speed, they're a confirmed Olympic runner. Armor and speed usually determine the playstyle of an operator. So some operators are very slow and will adopt this more anchoring type of play rather than faster operators that tend to rush more using their speed. You can envision all these operators and how they work as a game of chess because some counter each other but others aid each other. Chess is really hard, okay? So Tux, uh, what the hell do I use? If you're attacking, two operators that are generally easy to understand are Ash and Sledge. Ash's ability is that she has a straightforward grenade launcher that can destroy walls and she can also run at the speed of light. Sledge is a super easy operator to pick up because he has a big hammer that smashes anything you want to smash. I mean, it's that simple. You can smash whatever you want. If you're defending, Rook and Mute are some pretty easy to understand picks. Rook places armor vests that the friendly team can pick up and thus they'll be a little harder to kill. It's a very easy ability that anybody can use right at the beginning of the round and they don't have to worry because he's already done his job. Mute has four jammers that he can place that will jam some operator abilities and gadgets that the attackers are trying to use against you. What the fuck is this shit? So basically in Rainbow Six Siege, there are three modes that you can play. Bomb, Secure Area, and Hostage. In Bomb, defenders are tasked with protecting the bomb objective and to prevent the attackers from breaching into the building and planting a diffuser on that objective. In Secure Area, defenders are tasked with protecting a room objective and must prevent the attackers from taking a hold of it by staying inside of it. Nope. In Hostage, attackers are tasked with entering the building and extracting the hostage. The defenders must protect the hostage from being extracted. However, in all game modes, if one team is entirely wiped out and dies, then the other team will win that round. When you load into a multiplayer match, every round starts with a 45 second preparation phase. The prep phase is different for the defenders as well as the attackers. So first, we'll hit on what the defenders do in the prep phase. In the 45 given seconds, the defenders are...
supposed to set up their fortifications against the impending attack, because their goal is to make it harder for the attackers to get to the objective. All of the defenders have two reinforced walls and can have barbed wire or shields to slow the attackers down. To really visualize this, here's some riveting gameplay of me reinforcing a wall. Secure the room. We need to protect the biohazard container. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds to insertion. All attackers spawn in on their drone, a drivable recon device that can be used to give them as much information about the defenders as possible. The prep phase allows the attackers those 45 seconds to get a sense of the operators they're playing against and how they're trying to defend that sweet, sweet objective. Once the action phase starts, it's up to the attackers to bust the hell in and get to that objective or wipe out all of the defenders as those same defenders lock it down and prevent the attackers from trying to do so by wiping them or running down the clock. In Rainbow Six Siege, the objective will be the same every round depending on what mode you're playing, but how the round is played will never ever be the same. That's what's cool about Siege to me personally. One round, you could be facing a team of completely different five enemy operators and have a complete switch of operators depending on what happened last round. The objective could also be in a different place, on a different map, with different defenders against you, or a different team composition on your own side. No two rounds will ever play out the same. Every round in Siege also feels like the end game of a battle royale match. You're under this constant pressure and it's nerve wracking, but it also pays off once you win the round or it disappoints you if you lose the round. Keeping what I said in mind, Ultimately, it's up to you, the epic gamer that you are, okay, to work with your team and play that game of chess. Teamwork is everything in Rainbow Six Siege. Pick operators that work well with each other because the enemy team is going to be doing that too. However, it's not all about the operators in Rainbow Six Siege. This game rewards you for thinking outside of the box. Each map is completely destructible and there's limitless amounts of ways you can use that to your advantage. For example, Sometimes you'll be in a situation where you can kill someone from directly below them using Pulse and his heartbeat scanner, or sometimes you'll be in a situation where your IQ using her electronic scanner ability, and you can see that Pulse using his own ability, and you take him out. There's limitless potential for improvement, so take it slow and enjoy the ride. The learning curve is very, very, very steep, but the only way you'll get better is by playing the game and exposing yourself to new situations. Once you get really good with an operator, go and try out a new one. They may be harder to learn, but they're also even more fun to master. You will die, okay? You will die, but that's okay. It will all be okay. You're getting better every single time you do. And that is basically how you play Rainbow Six Siege. In a nutshell, actually, really, not in a very in a very brief sort of way. So as I previously brought up before, Siege is having a free play event that anyone who wants to try the game from any community, including the Battle Royale community, can do it for no cost. And if they want to buy the game, it'll be discounted on August 16th through the 19th in the near future. Also, I am going to be teaching a Battle Royale consecrator how to play the game. So we'll, uh, you'll see how fun it is when you're gaming with your bros, okay? This has been how you actually play Rainbow Six Siege and, uh, yeah.